let it be you and let it transform you. This is what you take into your daily life. And as you bring your awareness back to this world, bring it back with you. Bring that feeling of power, unlimited power, knowing that you can do anything to Christ who strengthens you. Allow yourselves to gently, gently become awake and aware. bless you, powerful, protective, and prosperous people. life as a recording artist known as Platy Dread, whose music promotes values and self-empowerment. His studies into metaphysics, coupled with his medical knowledge, have given him a unique perspective into the spiritual life. The need to explain, to explore, and to heal as a physician has made him a mentor and comforter qualities he has applied to his pursuit of enlightenment, the need to share what he, what he has learned and explain what is otherwise complex and confusing. Let us welcome with his truth, Dr. Tyrone Bush Flatty Dredd Bartlett. <laughs> I saw this talk, we have to make it an, an agreement, Paul. You don't start that keyboard at any point of my talk, okay? Is that clear? Clear. All right, let's that. Because he got this clever way of saying you're talking too long. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. Yes. Wrap it up, you know. And these, these moments are rare where you get an opportunity to hear the kind of information I'm going to share with you today. And for posterity and for the others that are not here, we're going to record it because I think it's important enough that the words that I speak this morning are given a chance to be disseminated to the wider community. So this is an important day for all of you because I'm going to give you some information that you need to hear. Now, what I'm going to share with you is a template, a, a pattern in which, if you understand it, you'll be able to attach all of your spiritual pursuits, your spiritual understanding, whether it's religious, whether it's disciplined, whether it's undisciplined, whatever, into a pattern that will serve the greater purpose of ascension, personal development, evolution, whatever. Mm -hmm. This is a pattern that is going to be so simple, I only need you to be able to count from one to nine. And if you can count from one to nine, then you're going to gather and receive this message I'm about to give you today. Now, my talk is called The Dynamics of Sight and Sound. Now, what it really means is I'm going to give you an idea that all creation being made of various degrees of vibration, which can be interpreted as sight and sound, that needs to be put in a context by which you can understand how to access it. You need to see from a simplified form first, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then approach it from a point of centeredness, okay? And if you're not centered, no matter what your discipline is, whether it's astrology or metaphysics or um, yoga or whatever, you're just basically in a bubble 
and you're not connected to the greater and the other truths that extend and intersect your particular truth. Let us start within the beginning. Now, in the beginning is where I want to start because we need to go to a point where there's nothing behind. This is where it begins. In the beginning, there was nothing. Is that clear, everybody? In the beginning, there was no thing. Nothing doesn't mean absence of everything. Absence means no thing. Thing being a material manifestation. So we recognize, therefore, that before there was a thing, there had to be a thing that could make that thing. And that no thing presence represents the ultimate presence of God's consciousness in its still state, when it's not moving. All right? So in the beginning, there was void. There was no movement. There was no thing. And in this presence was prime creator. Nothing behind it, nothing around it, just simply being, okay? But in this state of being, at some point, if there is a point, but we have to do it for the sake of humanity, uh, human cells, it desired to know itself. And I remember now I'm referring it to as it because there's no gender, there's no duality, so it can only be an it, it's not a he or a she. It desired to know itself, so it moved. Now in that movement to know itself, there came the first vibrational um, impulse, which we call the first cause, which is also known as the word, all right? Which is known as, you know, the beginning, okay? And when this desire to move occurred, it became aware of itself that it had no thing to orientate itself towards and around, so it desired to know itself by doing simply what you can do if you're in a dark room, I know where the front is, I know where the back is, I know where the left is, I know where the right is, I know where up and I know where down is. So in the presence of nothing, it knew that it had a front, a back, a left, a right, an above and a below. In some of the ancient texts, it wasn't in the beginning there was void. It was actually until the church mischievously removed it to, to create its own uh, agenda. It was in the beginning there were six directions. And in that six directions was the orientation of itself upon itself. It knew then that it had a front, a back, a left, a right, an above, and a below. And in that state of being, if Prime Creator was able to establish its identity as a being with, with, with structure. And this then becomes the original geometry of being. It's above, split into a four-sided pyramid to the top, and a four-sided pyramid going down below creating what we call an octahedron. So the primary, primary design of consciousness is, in a linear state, an octahedron. So in the beginning, it found itself in the presence of an octahedral shape, and it desired to know, and, and the feminine, whenever the masculine mind is, um, enters into a state of uh, trying to understand reality, it sees lines. The feminine mind sees curves. So from the masculine perspective, it's an octahedron, but from the feminine perspective, it's a sphere. So in the beginning, there was octahedron slash sphere, depending on which masculine or feminine mind you guys want to have this story told to. But in that spherical octahedral reality was a reality recognition that, well, I have a center and I have a circumference. So if I am here, what would happen if I go there? So in that state of moving from here to there, a second seat of consciousness was created and thus two spheres appeared. The first sphere in the here and the second sphere in the there. Now I am both here and I am there. Suddenly you have two spheres intersecting each other and in the middle of that intersection is a fist shape, shape called the Pisces vesica. You heard about the Pisces vesica? And this face in here was where the first duality was able to, to make itself, itself aware. Tell you what, let's just move all of this way. I don't need it. I don't need it. We're talking about payment so. And in this intersecting Pisces vesicle was the first duality able to express itself as an empty space and a space with something within. And this is where light was first created. Light was first created in the Pisces Vesica because the space between this intersecting space contrasted itself differently from the original state, which if you call it was nothingness, suddenly and within this somethingness was created a contrast. So the contrast of nothingness to somethingness is then called light and dark. Light in the center, 
and dark where everything else is. So thus was, let there be light in the two um, intersecting spheres. Now, I, I mention that because we need a little geometrical perspective in order to understand our Creator. The, create, the language of God initially has to be geom geometry and eventually mathematics before it comes into what we are. So this is why it's important for me to make you understand this. Now, within that Pisces vesicle was the movement of consciousness from left to right and left again and up and down and up again. And what have we established as the primary dynamic of light? The fact that it moves from one state and back upon itself, creating a circular motion. So thus is the first law established that all movement moves in circular pathways, okay? So now we've established the first dynamic of um, creator that all consciousness moves in a circle, all right? Now what also is important too is that the circle then first assumed a radial width that was wide and as we, as we, if, you, if she's going to make that noise, you're going to have to take her outside, all right? But I won't let you do that, all right? Because I'll have to go out with her and take care of her with you, so, because I love babies. In this radial um, pattern was a recognition that the radius can go from a wide to a narrow until eventually so was established then uh, a, an axis of wide circles spiraling down to very minimal circles and so what you ended up with was a vertical axis being created where you had the absolute light being contrasted with the most condensed light which we now call matter which is now in its density becoming an opposite pole to what light is and thus was the pole of feminine and masculine light and density light and form created so we establish now a vertical axis that goes from maximum radial width to minimal radial width all creation is light moving either in a radius that is wide or a radius that is so tiny that it seems solid and those two contrasting poles which became the original 